some time ago, uh, wonderful, incredible Nina Isabel uh, asked me to present uh, something at her incredible, uh, generous, gorgeous, big industrial art space called Three Phase. At the time, I was heavy duty into my own story, my own history, my own truth, my own <clears throat> oy vayness. And I was going to present a very heavy oy vay autobiographical history story with lots of storm and drong and <clears throat> tying up and whipping and not, not really, but uh, events that would have really stretched me emotionally in ways that I thought I was ready for. In the meantime, I had a show at the Dorsky Museum, which did enough stretching. And at that show, there were collaborators from New Paltz, the uh, MFA program and BFA program, uh, who participated and collaborated as <clears throat> gland doctor nurses healers uh, while I was lying in a coffin. And I saw their work at the Dorsky, at their final uh, graduation shows and it all came together having worked with them having seen that I was not capable ready or willing to expose my soul and my my pain <clears throat> any more than I had lying in a coffin and being dead uh, so the resurrected Linda felt somewhat I'm not going to use the word motherly but somewhat uh, so excited to have seen their work and, and then thought, I want to introduce them to Nina and her work and Nina, Nina, Linda, Jen, et cetera, community. Because well, it is, it is it, it's a world uh, functioning uh, um, enclave of, of uh, collaborators and um, people who speak our language. We all speak a language that we love and understand. And with Adam and Sai, et cetera. So what happened is that in asking them to come to three phases to be with Nita and her incredible space, where I had seen uh, Valerie's work and other, other work so beautifully presented, um, I thought, why not set it up as a panel uh, first and then um, give everyone 15 minutes to talk about their work. <clears throat> and in the meantime, it grew into a kind of gallery situation. So the, the bigger room became this, this pop-up immediate gallery space <clears throat> with things for sale and things that had been in their show and uh, in, in, in the Glenn Doctor's show. And, and then my work that serendipitously found a way via Nina there and she, she displayed it and curated it. So Nina not only curated my idea and the space, but then she curated another whole show in the bigger space uh, very beautifully. Um, how do I feel after? I always tell everyone not to think after because the judge comes, here comes the judge, and oh, I wish this, I wish that, it was blah, 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 blah. I wish I had invited, you know, whatever. I wish I hadn't said that happens. So I've been very, very kind and not, uh, uh, not judging and not um, critiquing because in a sense at 77 these are my not, I'm not going to say babies but these are my colleagues um, and in a way it was kind of like 
going to a graduation, you know, what, what mothers get to do. And not having been a mother, uh, I get to go to these, like, events. And, I mean, this is, in a way, almost my first event as a mother art, mother of art. And um, my colleagues, children, not children, they're big girls, they're big women. And um, so it was extremely exciting. My, my headdress kept falling apart and, and my dress was kind of like um, Russian, Russian peasant. I, 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 I turned, evolved into to an old Russian peasant woman is, is who came as me. And I was, and I, I, lo I looked at an image that Nina put on, on Facebook and said, oh my God, I was a Russian, I was a Russian um, uh, cabbage grower, you know, <laughs> Shakinka, Polklinka, or it, it was just with this black Russian bushka and, and, and this, this big outsized dress and then with uh, movement disorder and, and aging and so it's part of my I was doing a performance I ended up uh, accidentally performing and I performed Babushka girl woman elder not girl woman but elder I performed Babushka elder um, what would I do differently I might have thought about a microphone for all the speakers. But other than that, and in a way not having a microphone made it very intimate where the beautiful, beautiful um, installation of chairs, and you just somehow found 40,000 chairs and they were all installed so beautifully. Um, so that people had to really listen in, in, in the kind of Pauline Olivero sense of giving attention in, in, in a, a way that people aren't doing now because everything's being blared and loud and accosted. We're being accosted with sound in a way that become, became quite poetic and demanding and asking for an attention and a respect, a very sweet uh, respect in listening and attention giving. Uh, we began with a, a laughter exercise and Raquel Rabinovich, who's 90 and a phenomenal artist from, from uh, Rhinebeck, uh, became the, the Earth Mother goddess and she uh, saged everyone as we did a laugh, laughter exercise, it was very, very high, very, very um, ecstatic <laughs> event for me. I was, it, it, so she was, and I asked for the youngest person there to be with Raquel. And so this combination of being so excited with Raquel and the younger woman, and then everyone screaming, laughing, bowing to each other, it was so ecstatic, it could have gone on for an hour. But anyway, um, then we went into the other room, the smaller room. And so it was like a dance between two rooms, the bigger room and the smaller room. So we went big room, small room, back to big room for the conclusion. So in the small room, <clears throat> there was a kind of performative Q&A where they read questions. Uh, and it was like so diminutively sweet it was very, very sweet because they were giggling and I told them it was a performance. They didn't have to answer if they didn't want to. Um, it was, it was just, it was like, I'm not going to answer this. You know, I don't want to talk about that. Uh, no, no. And, but really, really low. So nobody could really hear and they would giggle and nah, nah, nah. And, I loved it because it was so real. It was very, very real and performative. Then it, then the four of them with an intermission for laughter. <laughs> I 
Everyone listened and everyone graduated again at the end of each of their talks. I, I did a <clears throat> faux uh, healer um, graduation ceremony. So I, I, I took away their doctor hats in a sense saying, you know, doctor's supposed to be so great and you were a doctor, but give me your hat because you're more than a doctor, you're a healer. And I thank them for putting up the money, the time, the effort, the car fare to go back and forth to New Paltz for some of them three and the other one five years uh, to put themselves under the thumb of really, really good. I've met some of the professors there and I like them a lot. So they put themselves under the thumb of these people who were going to say, no, you can't do that or yes, you can do that, or yes, have you tried that, or yes, have you seen the work of. Um, so they really put themselves into a boot camp for three to five years, and they paid for it. And, and so it was kind of really exciting to um, honor, because I had to think back to the fact that I had done that to myself also, and put myself in that kind of boot camp. And, when I did it, I, abscond I, I let go of my, quote, Catholic background. I stopped making crucifixes, and I started making chickens. Had I not done it, I probably would not have evolved into my current practice, but my current practice now includes crucifix. So, but I was, I remember being very uh, embarrassed by my Catholic proclivities in graduate school. And um, so I was always really shy of that information and want, didn't ever want to admit that, which I'm admitting for the first time here. All in all, um, I've gotten, you know, two things. When you get very, very close to people, let's say in this situation, because uh, Nina and the, them and I were in constant contact, and then we're in physical contact at the place. And what happens is you, you create community. Now the issue about that is then you break community because you go home that night and that community is over. Uh, I th I'm thinking about that. That's part of my process now of, uh, I, it's my, it's ideal to co-house, it's ideal to community live, and it, it lets go of that issue of oh, we love each other and we just dance to Addicted to Love and this is my work, blah, 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 blah. But then the next morning, you're drinking coffee alone. And uh, there, are, there are people who have thought that through and have dealt with it by living with others or including the others into their, their, their flow, their situation, their house, their gallery, <clears throat> their art life. So the result of having worked with Nina, who now is in the process of thinking of the next people coming, Sai and Adam, and Le, uh, Sai's br uh, brother, um, I f am filled with gratitude. Uh, I've gotten phone calls from Amanda, and, and I've gotten emails and thank yous, and um, people were happy with the event and dancing and some people even bought our um, um, what's it called swag some people even bought some swag that we brought um, so I bow to happy with ha 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 ha